how to be born again. To be born again, one must, one must first accept death. So here's the question. Look at me. Do you accept the death of yourself, of your old self? Yeah, yeah. Do you accept? You gotta, you, you gotta accept death. Now, not only do you accept death, but then you're gonna have to come. Not only accepting death, but you're gonna have to trust God that he's gonna grab you. See, one of the problems is, is that some of us did die a little bit when we came in, because you are way better than what you used to be. Amen. But way better than what you used to be is not who you're supposed to be. So then you wonder, how come I keep having all these troubles in church? Because you steal some of you. And God says, I want all of you. I feel like I'm doing a good job. Amen. That's how to close it. He says, I don't want all of you. He says, to be born again, one must accept death. And death is one of them things. I think it was, one of, I think it was Deacon Jason or Deacon Brian. We were at a funeral. Was it you? I think it was you. And we were trying to hold that casket up to make sure that thing didn't fall over. Remember that thing? People act up at a, at a funeral. And, and that was you. Poor old Deacon Brian. Th praise the Lord. He had more weight on him then. He trying to hold up a, a big old casket with a, a body in it, y'all, like this. And people coming up, laying on the casket. Ah! <laughs> Death, man, is... I've had to do many funerals. One of my first things in ministry was an old preacher that called me up. And, he, and, and one of my first things in ministry, he said, you're going to help me do, do the funeral. Boy, I could have died myself right there naturally. I could have died. I'm like, Doc, I ain't ready. I ain't got my meal. They got a little preacher's book. I didn't have my preacher's book. I didn't have nothing. I had to sit there with a, 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 a person that was deceased right behind me. I almost died, y'all, with the person that was in the casket. And I had to figure out words to speak to people that was mourning a death. And now I'm speaking to you because, seriously, there's some things that you may mourn that you like to do that man, God, it just, you just can't do no more. There's some things that I had to mourn that I love doing, but I just can't do it no more. Because those things are not conducive to the vision that I have. I love doing them. It's fun. But, but, but I, I, I can't do that anymore. So for me, because of what I have to do in, in, in the occupation that I have, in the lifestyle, I would say, not the occupation, the lifestyle, is that I just can't be sitting up listening to all kind of music. Those of you that know me know I love that song. I used to, Secret Lovers, right? Y'all know that song? Yeah. I can sing it once a year, amen? This is my time of year to sing. Y'all ready? Secret lovers, yeah, that's what we are. <laughs> See, y'all know it. All right, time out. Can't sing it no more until next year. That song was my jam. But I got married. And I can't afford to be having that in my spirit. Because when I was younger and my wife was acting up, that song got appealing. I'm just trying to talk to y'all. Because some of y'all think y'all still ain't got to be born again. Oh, I was going to church. And thank God that I could repent. But that ain't my best life. Because then I read in the scripture that I'm sinning even if I think upon it. Well, he says, I'm creating fornication if I even think about it. I'm like, well, Lord, I didn't fornicate it on levels that shouldn't even. <laughs> Come on, brothers. We got any fornicators in here. We got some fornicating sisters, too. But don't move. So, yeah, yeah I don't want to see nobody going arguing. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Lord, I didn't for real. If you think upon it. <laughs> well, then I... What, Jesus? Then I, 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 I'm done. <laughs> So I had to make some decisions. And the first thing, I had to start taking away things that I like. That's my jam. Got the record, everything. Can't listen to that no more. Because it's not conducive to what I want. So what you see today is a result of me dying to myself. I'll give you another one. I'll give you another one. There's things that I have in my life today because... I had to die to myself of spending money. Because when I get, or we get emotional, we like to go, some of us, anybody emotional shoppers? 
Yeah, he's, it feels good to go shopping when you just, you just mad at folks, huh? <laughs> Especially when you find you a good mall outside where you don't want to see nobody. <laughs> now, y'all got to find the malls where ain't nobody there. <laughs> and now you can do it online, amen? Just shop, right? Well, that ain't of God. Because three months down the road, oh, Lord, how am I? And they asking the Lord for help again. That's inconsistency, right? <laughs> Somebody said, I need to be born again. I need to be born again. Yeah, so I said, nope, I'm not, I'm not using my money to go do that. I'm going to deal with what I got to deal with because I'm going to die to myself. I have an opportunity to die to myself right here and right now. So I must first accept death. So some things, and you know what they are, it just needs to die. And, and don't wait till you get old. The Bible says, seek them while you're young. While you young. Some of you young folks need to be listening to me. Seeking my young. I need to die. Because why? If you don't give something up, you're going to lose it anyway. Right. If you give it up, God will give you everything plus. Yeah. yeah. So then I got to accept death. Watch this. When you surrender all of yourself to God, there will be a death of the willingness to sin. Amen. So the things that I used to do, don't want to do no more. Places I used to go. Don't want to go no more. Things they used to say, don't want to say no more. Why? Because I surrender all myself. All myself. We're talking about being born again, right? So you surrender all yourself to God, and there will be a death, there will be a death of willingness to sin. So you turn away when sin opportunities come. As soon as you try to get born again, a sin opportunity will come. Yes. Somebody say a sin opportunity will come. This is your opportunity to do something greater than what you did from yesterday. Ain't you glad you came to WCC today? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to get an opportunity. If you want to mature, you want to grow, here it is right there when it comes. That is called repentance, y'all. To where I turn away from what I used to like and used to want to do, but I'm not going to do anymore. Too many people don't see the benefits of that kind of lifestyle. People, too many people don't see the benefits, listen, of um, surrendering and repenting. They don't see the benefits of it. Let me tell you one benefit. Being able to go to sleep and not worry about what's going to happen the next day. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. I live a life that is so, uh, so many things come at me. If I didn't know I was not centered in Christ, I would have gave up a long time ago. I'm talking about I don't live it. When you surrender, I give it all to you, God. I repent, Father. And watch this. Now it's on you, God, to do whatever needs to get done. This is where you really need to trust God, y'all. Most people don't want to give up what they have or who they are because they don't trust that God has a better alternative. It was hard for me to become a pastor from a business person because I didn't trust God. And, I, and I'm not, you know... I, God, how much does the preacher pay? How much do I, I pay? Because I'm getting paid right now. <laughs> and you go on to that income, uh, income.com about, you know, you look up what different occupations pay. I'm like, but shoot, this ain't, this ain't. This, this. <laughs> <laughs> I gave it up. I gave it all up to do what I'm doing now. Only for God to be the one to take care of me and everything that concerns me. So if you're a part of this ministry, you concern me. You're a part of the concern of this ministry. So you need to come and say, Father, I thank you, Lord, that all my needs are met. Amen? Amen. Amen. Say, somebody say, all my needs are met. All my needs are met. So if you're facing a challenge right now, it looks like a job for El Shaddai to you, the almighty God. I'm telling you, it is your time right now. If you're going through something, let me tell you something. I go through something almost every week, and it is nothing but an opportunity for me to show out for God. Yes. Yes. Somebody say, after this, I'm going to brag on God even more. <laughs> the devil shouldn't have messed with you on this one. I'm going to brag on him even more. It ain't nothing but a testimony. That's all it is. But I'm going to surrender. And I'm going to repent. Everybody want the blessing, but nobody, see, everybody quiet on that part. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Surrender for real. And that's all we do. We say, God, I give everything to you. Everything. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I said, you don't hear what I, when I say everything, 
God, you got this suit, you got my car, you got my house, you got nothing I have, God. You tell me, see, everybody out here like, wait, 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 wait. I promise you, I promise you, this week I thought about, Lord, do you want me to sell this and I'll, I'll, so I can help this? I mean, this moment I'm sitting there thinking, Lord, what do I do so I can help this? I, I was like, I'm not going to let the enemy take over the, that person's mind. I'm not going to let the enemy go and ravage them. But God says, you ain't me either. But when you surrender and you repent, amen, you're in a position that is much stronger than the position you're probably in right now. To be born again, one must recognize the need of a what? Savior. You must recognize, a lot of people don't recognize, I don't need that. Or we come to church for a sport, that's, just, that's, a, that's a pie chart of your life. Got my spiritual stuff hooked up, got my business stuff hooked up, got my apartment hooked up. Wait till a piece of that pie gets wiped off. Keep living. Wait till, the, wait, wait till that relationship pie start getting messed up. And if our relationships ain't working, then we make work bigger. And then we do stupid stuff in a relationship. I know I'm preaching. They looking at me like, oh, he's talking about me. Yeah, yeah. When you recognize you need a savior, that means you recognize that I can't do all this on my own. Jesus is that savior for all mankind. Black, white, red, Portuguese, I don't care what you are. He came to save your soul. He came to make you righteous. He came to make you blameless. He came to cover you. He came so you could, you could have a counselor. He came, watch this, to make intercession for you. He came to heal your mind. He came to heal your heart. He came to give you peace. He came to be your joy. He came that you might have life, life everlasting. He came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. If he came to give it, I'm here to receive it. Anybody else receiving with me? So to be born again, first I got to surrender and repent. Second, I got to recognize that I need a savior. To be born again, one must ask for and receive the spirit of God. Y'all see that? So the first thing I'm surrendering and repenting. The second thing I'm recognizing there, I need a savior. The third thing is that I must receive the spirit of God, this Holy Spirit. I have a spirit. I wish I could teach. I don't have time to teach y'all about this stuff. I have a spirit, but then God has a spirit that he places on the end that he gave me to build up my spirit. Are y'all getting this? So to be born again, I must receive God's spirit. And a lot of y'all think I got God's spirit. If that was God's spirit, then what kind of stuff are you doing? Because God would never do that through you. God is always going to make you walk by faith and not by sight. God's going to always make you love on people that hate you. God's going to always make you be kind to people that don't deserve kindness. God's going to always make you be in, in a smile when you want to slap somebody in the face. God's going to keep, God's going to have, if the fruit of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit, nine of them, are not working in you, then you know that that ain't God. Are y'all hearing me? And so what you must ask for, listen to me, in any of you right now, if you go through these steps, you can ask. I'm asking for your, let's do it right now. So right now, say, Father, Father I, receive you I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. As my Lord and my Savior. Now, now, because of the death of Jesus and the resurrection of him also, I ask for your spirit to be deposited in me. I want your spirit, which is holy, to lead and to guide me from now on. Now, when you go out and you got a chance to sin, see if, it's, if it took root. See, we don't know if all that stuff, that, that stuff worked. Amen? You got to first have a chance to sin. It, you go to school, they give you the test to see if you know what you, what you read. You come to church, you're going to get a test. Somebody may give you a test right out in the parking lot. They didn't even let me through that big heifer and all that. <laughs> no, that's how people do at church, right after church. You know, I mean, why, why y'all looking at me like that? That's how y'all talk. 
That ain't no sacrifice. <laughs> that ain't no, no, that, that means, okay, I need to go back to church. I need to go back. It didn't take root. It didn't take root. And guess what? It's okay because God, what he did on the cross, he forgives you. Now, the person you cut off may not forgive you right now, but God does. So uh, now we receive his spirit. To be born again, one must be prepared to sacrifice. This is a dirty word in church. Everybody want their blessing right now. Pull the lever. They want to give an offering. And like it's Vegas, that church. And like you're going to come and the thing going to roll. And boom, bow. Right? By the time I got back to, 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 to work, boy, I got a promotion. <laughs> Repeat after me. Say, church ain't Vegas. Church ain't Vegas. It ain't. So don't, 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 you know, we're going to these churches and everybody say, you know, you know, God going to bless you. God has already blessed you. Yes. Somebody say, I'm already blessed. I'm already blessed. Yeah. And now let me tell you, let me tell you how you know you're blessed. Because the enemy, he sees fit to try to keep putting hell in your life. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. You know something's going on then. I must be somebody. Because think about when you're in the world. Nobody was messing with you. <laughs> I said, when you was in, oh, I, I, oh some of y'all said maybe in the world, like, ain't nobody messing with me now. <laughs> Soon as you start trying to do right, it's like lifting weights. Like lifting weights. Being a Christian is like exercising. Being in the world is just like putting the weight down. I, you ain't going against nothing. You're going with the flow of the world. So to be born again, one must be prepared to sacrifice. As you mature in your spirit, your flesh will attempt to fight. The more my spirit, that's why we say come to maturity class. What's going to happen? My flesh starts to fight back. My flesh says, what you doing? I'm getting up. I'm going to maturity class. For what? <laughs> you don't want to be up in that class. They ain't talking about nothing no way. Go to, go to maturing in marriage. For what? They're going to talk about the same thing. You ain't mastered the thing we talked about the first time. <laughs> I know I'm preaching. I know. I know. You just fix my plate when we get home. Get the car started. <laughs> Christians got to learn how to sacrifice. Christians must learn. How, we want every God, God blessing me. So we think this blessing is raining down from me. That's what they say in the Bible. Don't even pay your tithes and talk about this raining down. It ain't. Not on you. <laughs> I'm saying this in love. I'm saying, because it's the truth. It's the truth. You got to sacrifice. To give a tithe is a sacrifice. Yes. 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 Now, Lord, you know what this could pay for right here. Yes. This right chair? Yes. Right chair, Lord? You ever had some right chair? <laughs> this right chair, Lord? I'm sitting here praying. Like, you sitting there praying for a blessing to do this. But God, I got it right in my hand. Right. Right. I ain't got to pray. It's right here. <laughs> I'm telling you what I know. God said, you want to be born again? Drop it in the bucket and walk away like you somebody. <laughs> now you cry when you get home, but you walk away like you somebody. Because as you mature in your spirit, the enemy will try to fight you. And you got to do what Jesus did on the cross. Nevertheless, Nevertheless. not my will. Oh, you bring that King James up on me, huh? That Minister Kelly up on me, keeping me true. He said, don't delude it, Pastor. You say, thy will be done. That's when you say it's about to pull out King James on a brother. Oh, I'm feeling this, though. I'm feeling this, because sacrifice in, in Christ, man, is so rewarding. I'm getting ahead of myself, amen. As you mature in your spirit, your flesh will attempt to fight. Sometimes you will need to sacrifice what you want to do and do what God says do. The greater the sacrifice, the greater the reward. <laughs> to be born again, one must speak the language of your new life instead of the dead language of the old life. Dead language is, is like, you know what, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it. And, and that's repetitious. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to deal with this. And that's repetitious. I'm about to lose my mind. And that's repetitious. That, that's old language. That's dead language. You will have what you say. 
what you say comes out of the abundance of your heart. As you, it goes my other word, renew your mind, you will speak differently. As you speak differently, you will make new deposits in your heart. Yeah. Thus, you will be in a position to where you will be walking in the born again life. As we close this thing, how can I be born again? Surrender and repent. Recognize that you need a savior. Receive the spirit of God. Sacrifice so you can get your reward. Speak so you can renew your mind. Let me tell you all, you've heard it maybe before in church, but practically... This is how the Bible breaks it down for us to live in this born again new life. It's not meant for the church down the street. It's meant for all of us to live a born again new life. Yes. Your children can be born again. Yes. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. You just got to take them through it. Yes. But you got to first get born again. You have to die to yourself. Yes. What's in this life for you? Let it go. Because what God is trying to give to you is way better than if you think that you've acquired some stuff now. What God has for you, can't no man take it from you. Yes. I've learned one thing, when a man promotes you, man can demote you. Yes. But when God promotes you, yes. no man can demote you. Yes. No man can demote you. Ah yes. oh, man, when God gives you joy, don't give it to the enemy. He may take a possession, but don't let him take your joy. Would you please? Leave?